Welcome back. I'm Coach Dan Blewett. This is video six in our Tommy John series with Frank Alexander, who is the ATC and physician extender for the New York Yankees team physician, Dr. Chris Ahmad. So this is video six, and we're going to talk about months 12 and beyond. So this is basically once you get cleared, like, hey, you're done, you're back in the real world, you know, ba baby bird, you can go fly now, leave the nest. Uh, but it's still a really complicated time. As I mentioned, if you've watched the previous five videos, uh, if you haven't, they're in the description below. You can check out any of them. Please watch all six of you had any elbow trouble, especially if you're going through this uh, recovery your, uh, yourself. But in months 12, it's not like you're necessarily done right away. For me, it took a long time to be fully myself again, like being able to throw a really sharp breaking ball for a strike, feeling like I could contribute as a normal reliever, you know, pitch back to back days, like be on call which is one of the rigors of pro baseball. Um, I've had Tommy John twice, and I obviously have been chronicling that on my YouTube channel, on that uh, YouTube playlist, which is in this, the description also, and in this six video uh, series with Frank. So without further ado, we'll jump into this video covering months 12 plus of Tommy John recovery. All right, so I'm back here with Frank Alexander. So Frank, we're gonna talk in this video about months 12 and beyond, and of course, Lots of players will not be back right at 12 months. Some players will be back maybe at 11 and a half months. Like everyone's different, right? But 12 seems to be this really nice finish line that everyone wants to shoot for. But there's a lot of things that go into it. Yeah, there's so many things that so many different factors that play into it. And a lot of people will even hear that the average time to play is 12 to 14 months. I've even heard guys say that it's 14 to 16 months. In theory, you could be back playing in a game in 12 months, but the calendar where you fall and where your injury and surgery fall into, it may not actually be, you could be cleared at 12 months, but you may not actually get into a game until somewhere even between 16 and 18 months. So again, those factors, while you may get cleared at 12, if you got injured in the end of your fall ball season and it, that's October, then you're not going to be playing again till two Februarys from then. So that is not the 12 month mark. Yeah. And as, as I mentioned in the previous videos, both of my surgeries were in August, which for a person in pro ball is puts you in exactly that position where if you're kind of okay at 12 months, you want to try it, but then you're like, man, is this even worth it? Like, what if I, what am I going to get two innings as a reliever at the end of the season? Like the season ends in September. Um, and this was the case, my second surgery. I just wanted to get back into baseball after a long period off. And at like the beginning of August, I was throwing up to 94 again. I was like feeling like myself, like off speed stuff looked okay. And I was like, I kind of called my agent, agent handler and I was like, Hey, can you get me a tryout somewhere? And we did, and we drove up and it was kind of like, if I was better than one of the guys they had, maybe they'd take me for the last month of the season, which in my case was attractive because if I could catch on with the team for the last month, pitch well, then they invite you back for next season. Now you don't have to go through the trial process, you know, the next spring, which is, is difficult. And so I get out there, I go to this tryout and I throw to their hitters in, in BP before a game. And, you know, face probably 15 batters. Like they gave me a good long look, which I appreciated. Eh, probably not 15, maybe like, maybe like eight or 10. Um, and I was throwing hard. I, sh I flashed a good curveball. I was up in the zone a ton. Like I wasn't really sharp with my command. And so afterwards they're like, Hey, you know, we could take you, but we don't, we don't think you're better than one of the guys we have. Let's just have you back for spring training. Like we liked what we saw, you, you know, you threw well. Um, but let's just have you back for spring training. We'll give you a spring training contract. And I was disappointed by that. But as I, I, I rode back, um, you know, me and my agent, we talked and he was like, look, did you really think that you were like really, really ready? Because especially for college, especially for pro ball, which this won't apply for most, most people. But for me being in that bullpen, like making the team that day and like staying, like I get a locker after my, my tryout meant, I had to pitch anytime they called me. It wasn't like, oh no, coach, I can't pitch for the next two days because, you know, Tommy John, this is my first, like, that's not how it works at that level. Um, cause I was an independent ball. This was not affiliated ball where they might like wait and really help me rehab as part of my, um, you know, the minor leagues are a little bit different in independent, uh, pro baseball. It's just like, it's like the same as the major leagues in the sense that like we need to win today. There's no farm system. There's no like getting you back. Like you either help us win today or we'll get someone that, that can. And so my standard was, can I pitch out of the bullpen, 
even three days in a row if that's what they need, because that's what a typical reliever's workload looks like. And then when I really thought about it, I was like, the answer is no. I could throw a bullpen like I did today, or I could throw to hitters once a week or once every five days probably. But can I just get thrown in the fire and get pitch on back-to-back days, Monday, Tuesday, have a day off, pitch back-to-back on Thursday, Friday? Probably not. That's probably not. I'm probably still probably a couple months from being able to do that. And I think that's the wake up call, which we're going to chat through here is that what it looks like to be back can often look very different than what it looks like to be a contributing member on a team again. Yeah, One of those things that, that you talk about is, are you able to come out of the pen with a bases loaded jam with one out and the tying run is coming to the plate? There's so many different situations that a player has to be ready for it. When we think about Tommy John surgery, we only think that this affects position, uh, excuse me, pitchers, but it affects every position. It doesn't matter. Catchers are getting this injury. Outfielders are getting this injury. Pitchers, of course, are the preeminent ones that do get it just because of the sheer volume and the velocity. They're expected to throw a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time. The, the way that baseball is today, you're expected to throw a hundred percent of your effort on every pitch. Velocity is king these days. So you have have to be able to compete. And when the right time for guys to get back into a game, you may be ready for a clean, fresh inning with when your team is up 15 to nothing. You may not be ready. And most guys are not ready for the bases loaded jam in the conference championship day one on your return. Yeah. And for those of you, like I have a couple friends who, you know, played in the major leagues and typically what happens when guys get called up to the major leagues the first time is they don't throw them in a bases loaded jam situation. Actually, well, I, I do have a buddy that happened that happened to him and he like crushed it. But typically what they do is they put you in a non-factor mop up kind of inning, right? Like it's a nine to one game in the ninth inning and your team's winning or losing. And this is the time that the new guy they just called up gets to go in because the lead is so big that he's not going to affect the outcome of the game because they're going to get, they're going to expect that he's super amped up and excited because it's his big league debut, right? That's a huge life, you know, life achievement milestone. And that's kind of the same thing here. Like if you're just coming back in from Tommy John and you've just done simulated games and now it's your first time in a real game, they don't want to throw you in the fire. You might go out there and walk the first three hitters you face just because you're really excited. And like, things aren't quite as good as they used to be, right? Like even if you're a little bit sharp, it's still been a long time since you've been on the mound. So there's just this long breaking in period typically where sure you're back and like you're a member of the team and you can pitch, but you might not be able to pitch at the same regularity as your teammates. You might not be as effective as you used to be or you want to be. Um, in my case, I had a really tough time spinning really quality breaking balls the whole first season back from surgery each time, both times is the same way where I was lucky. I got by on, decent command and like a pretty special fastball. But if I didn't have those things, my career might have been cut pretty short because the the level I was playing at, I had to pitch well and there was no like, oh, he's got Tommy John. It's okay that he's got a six ERA. It's like, no, get the hurt guy out of here. Like, like, see ya. And that's also and that's also the way it is in college and high school ball to the same extent. Like, yeah, everyone feels for you that you got surgery and like you did all this hard work and now you're back. But if you're not getting people out, they need to put someone in there that can, right? They'll help you and they'll give you innings, but it's going to be like, look, I know you are ace last year for the high school varsity team, but we just threw you in there twice. And in two games, you got rocked. We need to like, maybe you need more time in the bullpen, or maybe we need to figure this out in summer ball. And maybe next season's your big season back. Cause baseball is still a competitive thing. And this is one of the hard aspects for people to swallow is that when you come back in it almost doesn't matter what level of play you still have to be a, a good, a good pitcher, right? You have to get people out for them to continue to be able to put you out there. And that's just part of the process where you might be like, man, I've made it 12 months. I made it 14 months. I made it 16 months. I'm here. I'm ready to pitch. And now I'm getting shelled and I'm walking a lot of guys. And this really sucks because now my team's losing faith in me. That's just like, it can, there's no real easy part and you just have to continue to push through that just like a normal season like there's ups and downs whether you're healthy or not there's those times where you slump there's those times where you have a couple bad starts and it could be right off the bat coming back from surgery and you got to mentally just all right i'm gonna i'm gonna keep getting better i'm gonna keep doing my work i'm gonna keep my chin up 
next outing is going to be a little bit better. And then before I know it, I'll be on cruise control just like I used to. But I'm sure, Frank, you get a lot of players who come back and they're like not quite as good as they are. And I know they've done some research about this, too, not just coming back from surgery, but coming back as statistically good as they were prior prior to surgery. And that's probably the harder thing from what I've gathered from some of the research that a lot of these, um, like the ASMI have, have shared. Yeah. You know, there, there's a lot of good points that you bring up there, Dan. And one of them is like, maybe in the, as we talked about in our last video, the, end of your mound progression is going to be seeing live hitters. Typically it's in a simulated game against guys of your, of your own. They're your teammates. They're your friends that you grew up with. It's not that first outing back where you're seeing hitters with a different color Jersey. So maybe we prolong that if your stuff isn't as sharp as you'd like it to be. Hopefully the calendar plays out in a way that it's not of consequence to your spring season, your summer season, your recruitment, your draft status, whatever it may be. There's again, Throughout all of these videos, there's been a, a, one of the common threads is that a lot of this is fluid. So we kind of know how this is going to play out, but it stacks up differently for every player. When we, when we're talking about, uh, Dan, you brought up a really good point about your, your outing in, uh, I think it was a previous video about playing in a men's league game where you mowed down the first couple of hitters, but then your second, your second inning, it wasn't really that great. Uh, we just had a kid who goes to a, a big division one surgery, his, excuse me, division one university. He just went in his first three innings following Tommy John surgery. He went three up, three downs, three perfect innings in his first, in his first outing following Tommy John surgery. That's a unicorn. That does not not happen to everybody. He, he, everything, the stars aligned for him. I don't want to downplay that his stuff is not as good as it is. This kid's a draft prospect, but the, you have to anticipate. We have another kid on the flip side of that. He had a great first outing. His second outing, he got shelled. So you got to really know that it's going to ebb and flow. And as you get back into things, maybe you do feel like, Hey, I'm back, but you're not going to be a hundred percent there. Your first outing back. And just just so everyone listening knows, like it's sort of my personality that when I give people advice, especially about something like this that I've been through, um, I don't mean to sound pessimistic about this. My personality is such that I try to help people understand where the landmines are. So if you're about to like go through a minefield, I'd be like, here's the 11 locations where you should not step. I wouldn't be like, you can do it. You can like, I'm a little bit less of a rah-rah person. Obviously, like I, I try to be encouraging, but just so you're out there listening if I'm all doom and gloom, it's it's come from a place of me trying to help you understand what are the pitfalls and how can you best prepare yourself for them. So again, I'm, I'm kind of like, here are all the landmines so you know how to prepare for them and not step on them. Um, Frank, you're definitely a little more of a, of a rah-rah positivity guy. So hopefully we have a good yin and yang going on here. But that's kind of my thing. Like, as I say, the thing to remember is most people come back from Tommy John pretty darn well, Right. A lot of, I mean, a lot of your big name big leaguers are back in the big leagues. College guys come back every year. High school players come back every year. So it's a really successful surgery, and players do figure it out. Um, so as we talk through all these these hardships and the things that are again landmines in your road to recovery, um, my job is really just to help point those out and what's going to be difficult, so you can be mentally prepared. So when you reach, you know, you come back and you're all excited to pitch and it doesn't go as well as you thought it might. You could say, oh, yeah, Dan said it it might be like this. It might be rough for a couple of weeks. I might get shelled, but I should stay the course and things will get better because baseball is it it always has been, as I mentioned, healthy or unhealthy. It's a game of ups and downs. And you just don't know how well you're going to do statistically right off the bat when you come back. And it's probably more likely than not that you won't pitch your best because your command will probably be a little rough. Your off speed stuff, you'll still be trying to find the feel for it. It's just tough to be like, have it all and be as good as you used to be when you're kind of a whole new pitcher and you had this long 12 month plus journey to get back on the mound. You know, I kind of have to be that rah-rah kind of guy to, to bring guys like you when you're, when you're in the, the depths of the trenches and the, the 
kind of call it depths of despair after having Tommy John surgery. Nobody wants to go through it. Some guys wear it as a badge of honor, at least externally. Internally, guys are crushed. Saw a 16-year-old kid who has a Division I scholarship on the line, and all he kept talking about the other day was how devastated he was. He spends two hours at the field before game time stretching and doing his arm care and making sure that he seemingly takes the right steps so that he didn't get injured. He tore his UCL. He needs surgery. He was, and again, all him and his parents kept saying the other day was, we are crushed. We are devastated. And your heart goes out to these kids. So being on this side of things, it's never happened to me. I've helped hundreds of kids through this recovery process. And just knowing that there is a light at the end of this year plus long tunnel, it's easy for me to stay optimistic. So And the research kind of backs me up on that, too. We did a research study where we looked at return to play rates in collegiate players, and it's on trajectory with overall player population, where it's 85 plus percent of college athletes are able to return to college play after Tommy John surgery. We looked at just Dr. Ahmad's patients, but we were able to find that even a handful of those guys, it's on the overall broad spectrum of Tommy John surgery, Dr. Ahmad does a lot of it. He's not the only Tommy John surgeon in the country, but we had a number of guys that went on to be even able to play beyond college. At the time of that study, I think we published it in either 2019 or 2020, and we had probably about a dozen guys over the previous three years that went on from college and went to go play professionally. So uh, that doesn't mean that we don't have more guys that are that were in that study are, are there today. Just at the time of reporting, about a dozen guys ha- had played at least one game professionally. So guys are making it back to play at the same and even higher levels of play. This is in stark contrast to the initial phases of Tommy John surgery 50 years ago. Guys were making it back to play, but not everybody was. Now, the way that technology has really come around, guys at high levels, we're talking 90% of players are able to return to play at the same or higher levels of baseball, which is fantastic. But of course, we're not going to talk about today the 10% of guys that don't make it because we don't want you to fall into that category. We don't want you to be in the 10%. We want every player to be in the 90%. And that's why we're doing these videos. Yeah, and it's it's important just to remember that you know the timeline is up to you to an extent. Where you know if you keep fighting and like keep staying the course and understand there's going to be bumps in the road and just keep at it. A lot of players just drop out on their own, and I've seen a bunch who rehab that you know maybe they're a high school player who was you know semi serious. Maybe they wanted to play in college, maybe they didn't. Uh, but after a year and change away from the game, they're kind of like, eh, you know, my arm still feels kind of not great. And I just like I feel like I'm distant from baseball and I'm just going to hang them up and focus on school or something else or whatever. So you see that, too. I think it's important to remember how fulfilling baseball can be and the reasons that you used to love it. One of the challenges is definitely being away from it for so long that, you know, absence can make the heart grow fonder. But at the same time it can just feel pretty lonely and like you just get really distant from the game and you have to just remember, remind yourself of what it's like and get through some of those dark times, some of those rough times. And um, that's a big part of the, the long, the long haul as well. Cause for me, both of my surgeries, I didn't come back till 20 ish months because I had an August surgery and I pitched again, not the next year, but the following, you know, April and spring training, May and in, in, in games. So that's a long, it's a really long time, pretty much two years to get back on the field. And you definitely get to the point where you're like, I haven't even smelled a baseball field in quite a long time. And this, my arm still hurts and this sucks. And I don't know why I'm still doing it. So you have to have a really burning passion for it. And you have to just really just keep putting one foot in front of the other to eventually get to wherever your, your finish line is. Yeah. And you know, hopefully it's within that reasonable time frame and when i say reasonable where it's reasonable for the player and they're happy with where they're returning they didn't rush it they they trusted the process they're really just kind of coming around to it and uh, letting it play itself out they they're not really 
putting too much undue stress on the system if they don't need to. And maybe it does take you 14 months before you're back seeing hitters again if you're a pitcher. Maybe it takes you 16 months if it if you had surgery like Dan did in, in August and you're not able to make it back until not the following year, but the year after that. You know, it's one thing, I think it's a little bit in that sense, easier for high school and college kids because you're constantly around your peers when you're Dan, like you, you lived in, in Indiana and maybe you're, you're around baseball players, but you're not around your teammates. You're not around your guys, you know? So that can be a little bit daunting for you at some times, but, uh, you know, Again, making sure that you have that good support system around you. And hey, look, if you don't get back to 12 months, it's not the end of your road. And Dan, you called it a glass ceiling, and it's exactly that. It's not a hard wall or or even a, a fake ceiling. It's it's there for you to break through and, and go on. And, and again, if it takes you a little bit longer, it takes you a little bit longer. But there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And my, my first surgery was the more challenging one in a lot of ways because I continued to have arm pain well into the winter after that first year mark. So my first, you know, the year mark passed by in August, which was in summer ball because I was still in college, you know, it was the end of summer ball. And then well into the winter as I was trying to get ready for the next season. Um, and of course I was, I'd aged out of college ball. So I was trying to prepare for hopefully making my pro debut, which I eventually did. But Um, you know, this is, we're at like month 16, 17 It's December, January, and I'm still having elbow pain. I was having consistent elbow pain. I was still throwing in, you know, I was throwing the right velocity. I was around 90 the whole time, but like every time out, I was like, my elbow hurts, my elbow hurts. When is this ever going to go away? It's 17 months. Why do I still have elbow pain? And I get emails from people here and there who have the same thing going on. And I don't have a lot of advice, except that you can't freak out about it. It's going to go away when it goes away. You know, talk to your doctor uh, if you need to back off, like try to make good training decisions. But ultimately, one of these common questions is my arm feels X, Y or Z. Is that normal? And there isn't like a clear like what's normal. You know, I came back from that surgery fine, uh, but I had pain pretty deep in the process. Is that normal? I don't know. Frank, do you consider that normal? But it certainly happens to a percentage of people. Yeah. You know, having some soreness or discomfort, we have to look at it from the the bird's eye view, the 30,000 foot view, because did you just throw your first 100% bullpen? Is this your first time in an outing? Was this your first high stress situation? So there, there's so much that we, we really have to look at because what may be normal for me may not be normal for you. And that's just part of the rehab process and the overall program, you know, following a mound progression, some guys are going to be more sore in the initial onset. Some guys may not actually have any soreness until they start seeing hitters again. So it's hard to just because again, player, two guys, same team, same path, have surgery. Let's say they have surgery the same day and they're following each other. They're playing catch with each other. They're on the mound together, but there may be something that just in that specific player, maybe it's their own biology that maybe they didn't give themselves enough rest. Maybe they, maybe they went out on a Friday night and had too much to drink or they didn't get enough sleep or whatever it may be. There's so many different factors that you may not actually be thinking about that play into it, that when you look back on it, you say, Hey, maybe that is normal because of that reason. And you won't know until you're kind of in that situation, but don't hesitate to reach out to the doctor's office, message your athletic trainers, your PTs, be like, Hey, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm feeling. And uh, we talked again in earlier videos about having a journal, like wrote right down after that throwing session, how you feel, how you feel the next day. Maybe it's just a number scale in your, in the journal. Like, I threw today, here's the number of pitches, here's the my pain scale or soreness scale, 0 to 10. 10 is soreness where I got to call my doctor's office and 1 is 
norm next to no soreness. Five is like normal soreness where you had a good outing, you had a good throwing session, and now that's what you're feeling. So something like that could be extremely helpful for, for an athlete. And it doesn't matter where you are on in the, in this continuum. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's definitely a difficult thing to figure out what applies to you, what's normal, what's not. Um, and just to come to terms with today, I, my arm feels the way that it feels and it's just going to be the way that it is for some amount of time. And, and the weird thing about the pain is that it will go away. Just like we talked about in, in the previous video about your velocity coming back magically, seemingly all at once. It's kind of the same way with pain that happened on both of my surgeries where, you know, like my second one, I was having pain up until like, for, I was having like pretty consistent pain between months nine and like 11. And then one day I was playing catch. I was like doing my, my throwing and I just like halfway through the session, I realized, wait, my arm doesn't hurt. And I was like, when did that happen? Uh, and it was the same way the first time too. I, again, I had pain like well into like month 16, 17. And then one day I just didn't. And I was like, wait, am I okay? Am, is this, am I okay now? And that's how it was. And then it didn't come back really. So it's, it's a weird thing that if you just keep putting one foot in front of the other, some of those things just clear up with time. Obviously you still have to listen to your body and, and make smart decisions, but your pain is just going to go away randomly on a Tuesday. You know, that's just like just kind of how it works. Is that kind of been your experience as well? Yeah. You know, that's it. I love that you point out it's going to go away on a Tuesday because it might be a Thursday. It might be a Friday. It, it might be in the middle of the night when you're sleeping. You know, there's no hard and fast rules about any of this. And that's probably what could be one of the most frustrating things about this process for an athlete. But know that you're going to get through it. You're going to be able to play catch again. And one day, maybe you're, you go from 88 to 95 again. You know, there's no, as we keep saying, there's, there's no one day on the calendar that you're going to be able to circle and say, this is the day that I'm going to throw my first outing and be pain-free. And it's going to be my best outing because maybe your first outing isn't necessarily without soreness, but it may be the lowest velocity you ever have, but maybe your stuff is electric. Maybe your slider is moving in a way that it's never moved before. Maybe you're spotting your fastball better than you ever did pre-surgery. There's so many different things that you can find if you want to call it the silver linings of this. You know, So guys being able to spot a fastball at 88 miles an hour, the 90 – Plus, will come again if you threw 90 plus. As we said in a previous video, younger athletes, especially guys that are still developing in a physically, they're, they're not skeletally mature, they're going to add miles to their velo. They're going to get a, an uptick. They're going to get bigger. They're going to get stronger. This process is 12 to 16 months, depending upon how the calendar plays out. Use it to your advantage to develop good habits, develop a strength and conditioning routine, develop a good arm care regimen so that by the time that you're in the dog days of July and August, your arm is feeling good and you're not saying, hey, what could I have done better? Yeah. And, and the thing to remember about the reason that some players do add velocity from surgery especially when they're younger, is that, A, like if you're a college player and you weren't really that rigorous with your arm care and your strength training and all that stuff, now to rehab successfully, you become very diligent and you like crush your workouts, you're, you're very regular with your arm care. And so those factors alone, which is just better training essentially, will maybe give you a two to five mile per hour bump, which is pretty normal when you just do things the right way for your body and strengthen it. And then for younger players, Typically players that are, and this was my experience as a baseball academy owner, if a player is training hard and throwing and just being a baseball player for 12 months, he'll add three to five miles per hour that year. Like, you know, if you throw 70 as a 14 year old, you'll add three or four miles per hour each year for the next four years. And when you're 18, you'll probably throw in the mid eighties. Like that's just in general, the progression that we've seen uh, when you're doing the right things and being a baseball player who focuses hard on his training. So if you go into Tommy John surgery, throwing 80 as a 16 year old, you're going to go through that for 12 to 16 months. You are going to add three to five miles per hour because you grew bigger. You're a bigger human. 17 year olds are bigger than 16 year olds, right? 
And so that's like built into it. So if you did throw 85 and you're in high school prior to surgery, you are probably going to throw closer to 90 when you come out. And again, results may vary for sure, but you physically are a whole year older human, which it makes a big impact on how hard you throw, not to mention all the diligence and the good training and the good rehab, which is good for your arm, your arm strength, all that stuff. So that's a big thing just to remember that whatever your ceiling was before, you're almost certainly going to exceed it if you're a young, skeletally immature kid who's now doing world-class training for the first time as part of that rehab. Yeah. And, and to your point, th this is not a performance enhancing surgery. This is a surgery done because you have an injury. There is nobody that will operate on a kid just so that he gains velocity on his fastball. Uh, that's reckless. It's, it's not appropriate. The younger athletes are going to see that. And even some of the older athletes, maybe they become more disciplined than they were beforehand. And they've really have owned their recovery and made sure that they're able to get back in a way that some guys go through a transformation where we've had patients in the past. They're like, I'm starting from square one. I'm going to change my diet. I'm going to change everything that about what I can do. We've even had patients show up and with a buzz cut because they just want a fresh, <laughs> they want a clean slate to, to build off of, you know, it, it might sound a little wild, but you know, some guys really just want to start, Hey, this is, I'm going to get a, a beautiful new ligament. I'm going to have a great recovery and I'm going to make it back better because this is what I want to do. This is my passion. And I feel that I could play at the next level. With months 12 plus, there really isn't like a paper program that you follow anymore, right? Like you're cleared, you see your doctor for the last time, whatever. And you're like, you're here you go out into the world with you, right? Um, and so then the player has to figure out how often do I pitch? How many pitches do I throw? How do I progress? What's my strength training look like? What does uh, rehab look like? Do I still do rehab? Do I do the same rehab for the rest of my life? Uh, so Frank, let's break that down first. Let's go with the rehab. What is, what is rehab, prehab arm care look like for months 12 plus? So this is where the baby bird finally flies the coop. They're, they're kind of on their own now. And the, the rehab really is more of a maintenance thing. And sometimes guys will go once a week. Sometimes they'll go once a month, depending upon what they're, sometimes it has to do with financial resources and stuff like that. So, uh, we definitely, if available to you, we love spot checks with your physical therapist or athletic trainer at school is, is certainly helpful just to make sure that everything is looking good. You should have earlier on in your recovery, start to lay the building blocks of what your future arm care is going to look like. And guys should really be doing their, maybe not their own strength and conditioning, but as we talked about in earlier videos, baseball strength and conditioning. This is where you should really have where the, those micro and macro cycles of your strength and conditioning programs, you really want to have those kind of maybe not fleshed out for the, for the, what the next calendar year is going to look like, because hopefully that's your first full season back and, and healthy. So you really have to start looking forward to what are the next maybe six to eight weeks, or maybe even what are the next three months going to look like? Everybody likes to plan things out differently, but when we're talking about uh, the different cycles in a weight training progression is typically six weeks, but maybe just for your own mental sanity, you want to know what the next three months are going to look like. So uh, being able to have that kind of fleshed out is super helpful, especially it, when it comes to planning, especially if you have spring season, summer ball, and then showcases mixed in between you, you want to have a good setup. You don't want to just kind of wing it and say, Oh, I feel like doing this today. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of feel in these months. You have to just figure out what's right for you. How did you strength train before? How do you want to strength train going forward? What are your new goals? How much baseball are you playing at this point? Like if you're spit out at past month 12 and you're in summer season or you're in your high school season or whatever, like what is, what does pitching look like for the distant future? Um, you know, then you're kind of back on what's your long-term career path like do you want to play college baseball are you a sophomore in high school are you a junior in high school are you a senior in high school like what does that look like uh are you at a four-year university and you're now a sophomore you know what are your goals do you want to get drafted as a junior do you just want to you know compete as a senior like what 
what's going to get you back into the rotation, into the bullpen, into games as a position player, whatever it might be. And how do you stepping stone yourself to where you are now to then those future goals? But yeah, I think it's important that players know that they're not going to take a step back. You know, a lot of players don't work as hard as they think they they do. And they realize this when they go through a surgery like this, that, oh, yeah, arm care is an, an everyday sort of activity, right? Three to seven days a week, like players should be doing arm care, essentially. Working on your mechanics is an everyday sort of thing. You know, there's a lot of throwing to be done. There's a lot of strength training to be done. There's a lot of running to be done and conditioning to be done. So, you know, do you kind of back off or do you continue to go full throttle and, and work really hard and keep your training up? And those are all personal questions. And how badly do you want to be great? And what do your aspirations look like? And what is it going to take to to get there? Yeah, and that looks very different for everybody. I mean, even if you have two players who are seemingly identical, what their future outlook it could be is maybe very far, far apart. So being able to really individualize that, that's something that the player needs to understand and kind of project on themselves. You know, we, we've talked about being an advocate for yourself throughout this entire process and knowing when the right thing is or when the, when it, when it is the time or when it isn't the time to speak up. And this is a time to, to, we've talked about taking ownership throughout the entire rehab process. And now you, this is your future. You've been cleared. You don't have to see your doctor anymore, hopefully, but we're always here for you. You can always ask questions. There's nothing wrong to ping your doctor's office, even at the 24 month mark from surgery and say, Hey, I'm two years out. What, what is maybe your recommended step? Do I need to download? What does my next off season look like? Or what does this off season look like? You know, there's so many different things. And, and that's why you continue to have those relationships. At least I do with a lot of our college and high school athletes and, and even the pro guys. Of course, the, there's different nuances at that level, but our high school and college guys, they'll reach out to me years after surgery and say, Hey, uh, this is where I'm at. What do you, what do you think? And there, keep that support system around you. You've developed relationships with your athletic trainers, your PTs, your strength and conditioning coaches, go back to them. Even if you've made it to pro ball and you, maybe you just got drafted, but you're not supposed to report for another month. Maybe you need to figure out what that next month looked like. You, you get your marching orders, but that's about it. You don't know where you should be at. Maybe the team doesn't want you to throw. Maybe they do. There, there's so many different ways that you could look at this that there could be a wrong way. Uh, we've talked about there is no wrong way to do a lot of the things here, but this is a point where it, there could be a very wrong way to do things moving forward in your career. Yeah. And one of the things about, uh, which we, we touched on before, one of the things about being a contributing full member of a bullpen or a starting uh, rotation is that you know, the game is the games change at the drop of a hat. And again, for for like for me trying to trying to catch on at the end of uh, one of the pro seasons, you know, it's like, yeah, can I pitch back to back days? Can I pitch three innings in a week as a reliever or four four innings a, a, in a week as a reliever? You know, can I make a start today and then go again five days later or seven days later, whatever it is? Um, those things are hard. And also one of the things that uh, and I was actually lucky a coach told me this. I was throwing for an independent league coach trying to help him or trying to like make a spot, win a spot on his team. And if not, I was hoping that he would like make some calls for me and vouch for me to a different team in a different league. And when I got there getting ready for my bullpen, he was already there because he was an instructor at this, this facility. And I went through my really long warm up routine. I did all my arm rehab. I did like this like 30 or 45 minutes stretching and more routine. And he said, after my bullpen was done, I threw pretty well. He said, by the way, you shouldn't do all that stuff um, in front of a coach like me in the future. And I was like, what stuff? He's like, well, you make it look like you're injury prone when you have to do that much stuff just to throw one bullpen. Um, now, the, the lesson learned from that, because there's some nuance here. And my point is that there are many, many times as a, especially as a reliever where you're just going to, you're going to be called into the game and they need you very quickly. Right. And so a lot of times with all this rehab, and this is sort of like the modern pitcher. Now everyone needs like a ton of time to get warm. Let me do my, my reverse throws and my tons of bands and my, all this stuff. I need all that stuff to be ready to pitch. Well, in real baseball, 
lots of times you're just your name is called and they need you in there in three hitters. They need you to face the five hole hitter and it's the the two hole the two holes up. So you have to be ready for the ups and downs of preparation as well. And you have to sort of not take all of that stuff as a crutch and a, as like your safety blanket. Like that was a learning thing for me that, yes, I there are things I do need to do to stay healthy long term and I, I want to do to be my best. But I also need to be ready and mentally OK with the fact that sometimes I will be called to go in a game and I will not have the time to do all this crazy band work. I will not have time to do all these stretches. I will not have time to do all these things. I'll just need to start throwing the bullpen and be ready as fast as I can. Can I do that? That's what like being a normal contributing member of a bullpen often looks like. And that's like we all know that, right? If you pitched, you've had those situations at various levels in your career where coach needs me in the game as fast as I can be there. And that means you don't have time for 20 minutes of band work to make sure your arm is perfectly ready. And I think this is also important in the fact that your arm doesn't actually always need all that stuff either. If you were that fragile that you didn't do 20 minutes of band works so that you're going to blow your arm out again, then no one would be able to play baseball, right, Frank? Like those things are good. It's good to be diligent, but also within reason because the, the ligament is pretty strong. And if you've done this, the rehab the right way, it's not this like dainty little thing that's going to tear if you're not perfect. There's so much that goes into making sure that you're ready, but you also have to be adaptable. And the human body is so resilient. You know, the in theory, the UCL should tear at 32 newton meters and baseball put, throwing a baseball puts over 64 newton meters on of force on, through the UCL every time you throw a baseball. So in theory, we should throw a, every time you throw a baseball, you should tear your UCL. But we don't because we have the muscles around it. We have uh, so many different moving parts within our bodies. And being able to, yes, you want to have the proper warm up. Yes, you want to make sure that things are going right. But maybe part of if you say that at, and this is a good time to practice that you're beyond the year mark of your uh, the year anniversary from surgery. And now you need to worry about getting ready in a hurry. That's not something to do when you are in the month eight through 12, where you're just starting to get back on the mound again. But maybe in month 14, maybe it's January and you're starting to get ready for uh, if you're in high school, March or April, maybe you say, hey, it's not a rush to get ready, but what would I do in that situation? That's where when we talked in previous videos about meditation, maybe that's something that you think about. Maybe it's something that you work on visualization on. What is that going to look like for you? And this is a great time to really start really focusing and emphasizing your craft and how are you going to be as a functioning member of your team? Are you in high school? Are you a two-way guy? Do you need to worry about going from third to the pitching mound in a pinch? Do you have to, are you in college and you're coming in, you were a starter last year, but your velo was high enough that this year you're going to be the closer because of where you are in the tail end of your recovery? Or are you a professional pitcher? There's so many different things that go into this and, and it's very difficult for us to touch on every specific part of look, if I see 10 Tommy Johns in a day, those are 10 individual situations. There may be some overlap, but they are very unique. They are very specific. Each one is a unicorn. They're not zebras. They're not horses. They're not traveling in a pack. They might seem like it, but they're, every one of them has a different color horn and each one of them has a different color rainbow following them. So it's so tricky to, for us to, these videos could go for, for days on end if we talked every situation, but being able to have that foresight to anticipate what you may be called on, really think about what your future looks like. And that's where the discussions come into play with your coach as you're getting ready to return to the field and play. Yeah. And I, I liked your point, Frank, about doing some things to be comfortable being resilient and being adaptable and yeah, like you really do need to understand that you might be needed needed in the game in five minutes or from third base if you're a high school. Like that happens. It's not ideal, but we all know that it happens. And so just remembering, and this is good for parents too, like because I know you, you, you always want to sort of like nag your kids, hey, make sure you do all your bands before you go in the game. Make sure you do all your things. But there is a point where like the, those essentially training wheels need to come off so that you are ready and you're not mentally – handicapped by the fact that, oh, no, I didn't do all my band stuff. Am I going to be able to pitch well today? Am I going to get hurt today because I didn't do all my band stuff? I went through that same stuff. 
my first year in pro ball, I was doing so much forearm care, all the, the rehab for my arm care, because I was so nervous of not getting hurt that my velocity was down. I was basically just fatiguing my forearm so much between starts, doing so much of this rehab, trying to not get hurt again, that I was down like three miles per hour and I didn't understand why. Then when I started to back off, my velocity normalized. And so that was a lesson learned. And so, yeah, at a point, there just like becomes a balance of being very diligent with keeping yourself healthy, but also understanding that if I miss a day or if I'm short of my workout or I just need to enter a game, I'm going to be fine mentally and physically. Because I've seen a lot of guys, even deep into pro ball, who if the routine isn't perfect, they like mentally collapse and they can't pitch that day. They can't possibly be their best because the routine got got disturbed. I mean, you saw this even this year like the broadcast team like the na- like the national anthem was like 3 minutes late and he was like fuming and furious in the in the bullpen it's like we get it you're all tr- like i know this routine i know hey you want to be exactly ready when you're when you're right around to the field but it's 3 minutes dude if you can't if you can't adjust for 3 minutes then you're mentally weak right like that's just how it is um so you have to find that balance of okay, this is my workload. This is what will keep me healthy, but I'm not going to crumble mentally and physically if and when the game calls and there's a situation where I need to do something out of the ordinary. Yeah, maybe you show up to the field a couple minutes earlier than you normally would just to make sure that you get some of that in. I I know at the youth levels, it's hard sometimes. I I mean, I hear stories all the time about kids, game time's one o'clock, but Kids are running onto the field at one o'clock, taking their positions because they showed up at 1255, you know, so it, it's harder. And look, I, I get it. Uh, I'm a new parent myself and y- you have all these ideas of how you're going to be on time and how things are going to go perfectly. And that that just isn't the way of the world. We love to make things as perfect as possible. And sometimes it's not going to be. But for the older athletes, for the the older high school, the college and beyond, there's no reason why you can't get to the field a couple minutes early knowing, and again, this is where conversations with your coaches and, and the people that are advising you come into play where, hey, I know that I'm going to be our starting third baseman today, but what are the odds of me coming in to pitch? Or I know I'm going to be our starting pitcher today. Am I going to play left field after? Am I going to the bench? What am I doing? What are the odds? And this happened to a teammate of mine in high school. He was our starting pitcher. He went to play shortstop. The guy who came in to relieve him in the seventh inning couldn't get the final out. So we put our shortstop back in to pitch. That is not an ideal situation. And I'm sure that happens all over the country. So being able to be adaptable, resilient, and being comfortable being uncomfortable are huge traits. And that's what's going to get you to the next level. And and that's what's helped you get through this recovery. All right. So thanks again for watching. Again, I'm Dan Blewett. Follow up with Frank Alexander. You'll find his contact info as well as Dr. Ahmad's office's info in the description below. If you have any comments, please leave them in the description below. You can always email me through my website. Links to all that stuff are again in the description. But again, Tommy John Rehab and Recovery, it's a long road back. It's tough. It's tough physically and emotionally. But then again, most players do come back successfully. So, you know, keep your chin up if you've been going through it. And again, reach out if you need anything.